From Katanguru, I travelled to the small town of Mpigi to visit the nearby 453 hectare Mpanga Forest Reserve. What follows is my day-by-day -day video diary of the wildlife that I found during my 12-day stay at Mpanga. Here I am sitting in front of my room looking at the wall of forest directly in front of me and the red-tailed monkeys jumping through the trees right in front of my room. The huge black and white cast hornbills were a raucous and almost constant presence. I'm in Mpanga Forest Reserve near Kampala, a tiny remnant of the once vast forests that covered this area around Lake Victoria. As with any tropical rainforest, it's a pretty tangled mass and the overwhelming impression is of green. There are very few flowers. Even when flowers do occur, they often tend to be disappointingly drab. Even so, they do manage to attract a few butterflies and other insects. Members of the ginger family are often some of the commonest flowers on the ground floor of tropical rainforests. They're also often some of the most flamboyant. Most rainforest butterflies though are not interested in flowers, they prefer something stronger. This Neptis is feeding on a bird dropping. One of the characteristics of many tropical organisms is they're often giant size compared with their temperate counterparts. Giant millipedes in Africa can reach more than 20 centimetres in length. Ah. This one has two rows of stink glands along its side, releasing an unpleasant defensive chemical, which here you can see staining my fingers. Giant millipedes are not the only animals in the forest employing chemical defences. This brightly coloured day flying moth also has them. It's feeding on a fallen fruit, favourite food for many rainforest butterflies and moths, and much more popular than flowers. The dark brown forest of butterflies also a common sight flitting around on the forest floor looking for fruits. often accompanied by the common glider. Here and there throughout the forest I found these large spiders webs inhabited by hundreds of spiders. I spent most of the day just sitting around not doing very much. There can be two types of spiders in these large webs. They can either be communal in other words, they all live together, but don't actually cooperate in any way within the web. And social, where their behaviour can be very complex and they can help each other out, catch prey, even feed each other's babies. The question was, was this social or communal? The answer came 
when a fly blundered into the web as I was standing there wondering what to do. Several spiders immediately ran up and started trying to catch it. There didn't seem to be much cooperation going on here. In fact, it seemed to be each spider for itself. The one beneath is doing its best to steal the fly by tugging it downwards through the web. Meanwhile, the others are hanging on like grim death. Finally, one of them managed to grab it and rushed off to its own private tunnel within the web. So these are communal spiders, not social. Most days I would find one or two new butterflies. This dead leaf mimic is a square-winged red gladiator. The Herminia glider was a common sight, searching the forest floor for fallen fruits or animal droppings. Meanwhile, this familiar legionnaire is supping on sap leaking from a damaged vine. The huge western emperor swallowtail is one of Africa's largest butterflies. You sometimes find it drinking on damp ground, preferably enriched by animal urine. The eye spots towards the end of the hind wings are designed to attract the attention of a predator away from the head. The beak of a bird, for example, will snap at an eye spot, leaving its owner to fly away minus a small piece of wing, relatively unharmed. This blue euphedra is one I just cannot identify. They're really, really difficult. And I didn't manage to identify this legionnaire either, a crayer species. If anybody knows what they are, can they please let me know? I'd spend the first hour each morning trying to get some new film of the hornbills near my room. This is a juvenile. Here the adult is stripping dead bark off a tree looking for insects to feed to the juvenile. Then it was back to the forest. This blue vagrant butterfly looks like a dead leaf beginning to shrivel. The African map butterfly is a common species over a wide area, usually found feeding on damp ground. And the bronze forester basking on a fern is a typical sight in an African forest. Because it was still dry season, there were few other insects apart from butterflies, which is why I've had to show you so many of them. From Mpigi, I travelled on via Kampala to Masindi where I hired a vehicle and spent two days in Murchison Falls National Park.